good morning. Uh, Saturday morning. Uh, I got up a little bit early. I mean, not super early, but I got up a little earlier. And I read a little bit of Board Game Geek forums, which I should keep up on a little better. Um, I, I don't know. I I I have a stress. I'm I'm at, at, at I'm social and antisocial all at the same time. I'm just antisocial enough to not keep up with the Magic Realm community, which which I really should, because there's a lot of uh, folks doing really cool stuff. So and I I'm missing out. But anyway, <laughs> enough enough about my personal uh, foibles. So I read on there, and it was a, a couple days ago. A gentleman posted about you know it was. He was a new player to Magic Realm, and he was asking about, you know, is this game as random as it seems? You know, we played, and there was a bunch of stuff, and this stuff didn't, you know, right? And I rolled a bunch of times, and it nothing happened, and and a lot of people answered him, and they 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 gave him great answers. So so this isn't about that. It's it's more about, um, you know, it got me thinking about the randomness in Magic Realm, and sort of how do how do you feel about that? How how, how should we feel about that? And why, why doesn't it ruin the game for me? And I'm sure actually a lot of people bounce off of it. And I, the funny part about Magic Realm is I think it is probably the, maybe the best game, board game ever designed. <laughs> but I can so see why people bounce off this game uh, all the time. And I think randomness is an interesting part. It's a, it's a 1970s, 79 design, right? 78, 79. Um, I think I got it at Toys R Us, by the way, in 1979. I can, I can very much remember. Now this could be a false, you know, false memory. Um, but that's going to be my, my, the myth and legend. I, I, I bought this at Toys R Us in 1979. Um, but, but back to Ran, I, I'm rambling, by the way. This, this is not a rehearsed video in any way. I am to on a total ramble, so I apologize. So I find the randomness in Magic Realm interesting, right? There are how many possible ways to lay these tiles out. And then on the tiles, you're going to have chits, and these are, are randomly placed in, you know, many, many, and in, 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 I, I don't know how many permutations possibly between the, the warning chits and the sound chits and the treasure locations. I, I'm not, you know, I don't know how many permutations, but quite a lot, I imagine. And then, of course, all the treasures are randomized and the spells are randomized and so on. And then add to that the fact that you might be rolling on a loot table or a power of the pit table, right? There's there's a lot of randomness in a lot of die rolling, a lot of randomness. Um, and yet the game doesn't feel very random to me. But obviously it did to a new player coming in. And so I think the interesting thing, and this and this answer is not... A revelation. A lot of people gave um, gave this answer in in the forum comments, but it is, it is interesting to note for me. I think the thing about the randomness in Magic Realm to me is that it is a vast random space. It really is like the the permutation space of of Magic Realm. Any given game is gigantic, um, but super knowable. And I think uh, you could, you know, compare that to a, a, a game like Talisman. I, I know. I'm, I'm going to roll my eyes. Ugh, I, um, I mean, yeah, Talisman's not. I, I have Talisman, by the way, the original Talisman on my, board, on my shelf up there. And it was a great game the first, like, two times. <laughs> um, and it's actually still sort of fun with, like, six people going, you know, going at each other the whole time. Having said that, so you, you, you think about Talisman and you go, okay, well, I got this giant random deck. And so you don't know what's come. It could be a dragon. It could be a rat. It could be a magic ring or a pool, which you drink and gain light. Like there's so many, like there's, there's all these choices in that deck. It's unknowable. There's 200 cards or whatever in that deck. And, and yes, it's knowable in the sense that you could, you could memorize the deck. But it's not knowable in the sense that from your first turn to maybe your 20th, 30th, 40th turn, you don't have any more knowledge about the board than you did really 
before, right? You you have a little bit. The pool's only in there once. You know, there might be only six, three dragons in there. You know, you, you might know some of them. Um, a, it doesn't talisman as much. And B, it just, it's just that the, the decisions, the, 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 that random space isn't knowable and there's not much reward for knowing it. How's that? Uh, in Magic Realm, it's very knowable. Again, to a new player, I would imagine it's not, doesn't seem very new. And so it seems very arbitrary. And I always joke that there are three phases to a Magic Realm player's uh, movements. First is they don't hide enough and they die. The second phase is they hide too often. Um, and the third phase is they hide, you know, just right. It's, it's the Goldilocks um, of hiding. You know, my my one friend is like the first phase you can get over super quick because all it takes is one guy like me telling you, dude, you, you should just hide. you never you don't don't walk into the ruins unhidden when you don't know what those chits are. You 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 hide first before you go in. Hundred percent, right? You know, oh, you're from here in the Curse Valley and you're gonna go into the crag, you should hide, hide, move, move into that into that uh, crag too. Okay. And then they do that. And then because that kept them safe one game, now they're doing that all the time. It's hide, move, 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 or hide, hide, move, move, or right, and so on. And that's what they do. And they keep doing that and keep doing that and keep doing that. And they're wasting like two weeks going through the crowd because they do hide, hide, move, move, hide, hide, move, move. Oh my God, this is such a slog. It's like, mm, dude, you don't, you don't have to hide all the time. Why not? Because you know the bolt. Um... So that third phase, though, is when that knowledge comes in, right? You know what can appear. You know where it can appear. You've seen some of the chits on the board because someone's turned over Stink C, right? So you know, oh, these guys are dead or these guys are on the board already. Well, that means that some portion of my caves are safer, right? You go, oh, I'm playing the Woods Girl. Well, the woods girl and the swordsman, for instance, you know that they can run from everything on this board except for two of these guys, the imp and the octopus. And you know that the imp spawns in on the statue, which is clearing two, and you know the octopus uh, spawns in the pool, which is clearing six. So if you're the woods girl or the swordsman and you want to play a slightly riskier game as a you know right and you were okay with running you don't have and unless you're gonna land on a two or a six you don't have to hide that day and as chits turn over you get a better sense of what you are how you were safe and how you were not safe and you get a sense of well i'm safe going into the ruins unhidden on a one in six chance i'm gonna be screwed Can I run from that? No. Can I fight that? Yes, but it might wound me and damage my arm. Well, are you willing to take that chance, right? I mean, you will gain that over time. Um, and so, again, it, it's very interesting to me because it is a large random space, but it's knowable, and it quickly, as as information comes uh, becomes known. Wait, is my, is, my, is my cat coming through on the mic? My old demented cat. Um, who thinks he needs to be fed all the time. No. Okay, anyway. Um, I actually don't know that he thinks he needs to be fed, but he will follow you around and, and meow at you, like, you know, like old man. He's getting, you know, get off my lawn. Um, or quit, quit talking about Magic Realm. But yeah, so, so it's neat, because as, as chits come up on the board, you know, you are getting that view of the board, and as it goes, your your knowledge space increases, and then that randomness decreases. Um, so I think I think that is one half of of sort of that that random puzzle. The other half is, you know, are there are there large stretches of time when say you might get stuck, or are there games where that might be untenable 
or where you might sit here and try to let's let's look at uh, hold on, hold on. um oh I read runes and you you get nothings for two weeks or you know right and the answer is yes the I mean it is it, it very much is a game where you may indeed uh, searching is the big one right searching is the one for like a, a passage or a, a, a treasure site searching is the killer um you may be sitting there and you may be rolling and i've had games with characters and you go for a week and you're like i cannot discover this damn lair i can't find this thing. this thing's killing me um and you just go for day after day after day and is that is that exciting is that is that the answer is no i mean i, I totally get that um what's interesting to me about that is that you know magic realm was written at a time very much you know it it is a right it's from a wargaming company in 1979 it is a very wargamey design of d d right i could i i'm i mean i i you know, um i'm picturing someone going into like richard hamblin's Fist. I don't even know if he even had an office, but I'm picturing someone going into Richard Hamlin's office and going, we got to do something about this D&D. <laughs> so, so make me a game that's like D&D. And this is effectively the war game company's answer to what was then started, right? That, that, that damn fantasy game that, uh, that started uh, to, to sort of take over the hobby. Um, and in that, it is a strategic level simulation of someone's D and D campaign, which I find that to be a fascinating um, game genre, right? The epic fantasy adventure board game, kind of. And there's there's many games since then that have sort of vaguely tried to do the same thing. And I've talked about Runebound and uh, Explore It, and you know, Uthia, and right, and so on. Um, Mage Knight. And what I find interesting about Magic Realm is Magic Realm is very much written as a simulation and a simulationist's game. Uh, in the sense that um, it's not a narrative game. In the sense, it's not trying to generate a narrative. No, it does, but 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 bear with me. But there's no story mechanic specifically. If you if you don't use the book of quests then there's no story mechanics. There is nothing that drives the story forward or, or drives the story to a conclusion or even make sure that there's a coherent story uh, at all. Uh, there, there aren't that many gamey mechanics. Now, there's a lot of game mechanics, but there aren't many... Like, there's, there's no catch-up mechanics, for instance. There's no mechanics that ensure that the game is is fair or good or that all players get an even shot or or whatever right um it's very simulationist uh in, in its in its in its mechanics and in its I, I assume you know intentional design and what that means is that it is really good that with the high random uh, space means it's very good at creating interesting situations. It's very good at creating situations. It is sometimes good at creating interesting situations, and it's also very good at creating not that interesting situations. <laughs> it is very much a narrative engine, story engine, like baseball is um you know in baseball you can get a game that is look i i, I root for the pirates so there have literally been decades where nothing's happened <laughs> i've i've literally rolled sixes on my uh locate checks for for 10 years um but there's there's right but every so often uh, you do get that situation where it is the bottom of the ninth. There's two on. There's two out. Uh, 
the pitcher's up, but he's a little tired. There's a guy warming up in the bullpen, but he's not ready yet. Um, right? I mean, you, you do get these amazing situations, and you do get these situations where your team is blown out in the first inning. You know, it, it's 10 to 1. Done. Your team's got three hits. And, you know, and a lot of people at that point go home because they're going to beat traffic. And and I mostly would sit and stay. <laughs> um, my wife's actually a way bigger baseball fan than I am. Uh, I've I've I, I like baseball. I really do. I I think baseball is a great 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 sport. Um, for that reason, almost because it is very much that kind of that kind of game. Um, and sports are like that. There's nothing about a sport. Sport is a set of rules and a set of ways that you interact with each other and the ball and the and the, the field or whatever, right? And it might give you a nail-biting some time, and it might give you a little bit of a slog. Um, and Magic Realm has a lot of that going for it, too. It is It simply lays out this set of rules, this simulation. Uh, these are the parameters. Meh, is it going to be a good story? I don't know. We'll see. You know, I've had both of those games. I've had games where I've had a character and he's doing great, and then all of a sudden he gets caught trying to, you know, discover something, and it takes them a week to get anything done. And you're like, well, that just deflated this game pretty hard. Um, and then I'll have games where it goes literally down to the last day, whether I'm going to score that last point or not. Um, you know, most recently, I just had a game where it was the first time I've ever used the Withering Claw, and it saved the character. It saved the guy. Or just in the past couple weeks was the first time I had a game where I made any good use of the magic carpet. I played this game for a decade and have never, and have, you know, have had not found a situation where the magic carpet was of use to that character. And then I did, and I was like, this is incredible. I think that's Sort of the joy is that with so many permutations, you are bound to find that unique, oh my God, I've never seen this before. Even after a decade of play, um, you're, you're going to see stuff you just haven't seen before. And when you do, it is magical. And then sometimes you're going to be stuck trying to find the damn layer for two weeks. Um, and I think whether or not whether or not that description just turned you off of the game, like depends on sort of how tolerant you are for baseball. <laughs> I, th I think I think that's you know right. It it has a lot of that ebb and flow. It's a very similar style ebb and flow in terms of the narratives that it can produce. Um, you know, I, I so. I find it, I'm not even saying anyone's right or wrong. I think people that bounce off this game, I understand why they might, and they have every right to, of course, have, you know, those gaming preferences. And they're not wrong, um, of course, but but I find, I still find it fascinating, even though, um, even though sometimes it it, it sort of, eh, you know, you get into this weird situation and you have a death hex that you can't quite get through or whatever, and the game stalls. They even find, you know, okay. find those interesting also. So so that that's that's about I think that's it. I, I think um again this 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 wasn't well planned. I didn't think about oh what do I want to say or make points or anything. I just this is a ramble based on uh that post getting me thinking about uh, the game again, uh, you know, and, and what the randomness is and what it looks like to people and what it looks like to new people coming in or old veterans, you know, or, or whatever. Um, I do think it will get better if, if, if a new player sticks with it. I think as you understand more, you will, that randomness becomes more knowable and, there's a mystery to that, which is, again is appealing, and I think that's what allows me to weather the the crappy blowouts, right? The the games that go really nowhere, um, all, much like you know, 
and, and then sit through those or get through those or appreciate those actually because I don't hate even those games. Um, but then you appreciate those really cool moments even more. So, so that's about it. Thank you for um, you know indulging my rambling and um, and I I have by the way reverted. I reverted my my tabletop simulator to a version to about a week ago. <laughs> so I can drop cards. Yay! So I will try to get a game going here sometime in the weekend. So anyway, thank you very much. And I will, you know, I'll talk to y'all later.